Hey guys, I'm here in Puerto Escondido in Oaxaca, Mexico, which is a small town in southern Mexico. And even here, there are microgreens growing and microgreens farms uh, producing product for end consumers and for restaurants, which is really cool. So uh, what's really unique about this, uh, this town in this area is there is absolutely no McDonald's, no Pizza Huts, no Home Depots, no Walmart. So getting supplies here is a lot more challenging than uh, I'm used to working with farms in America and Canada. Um, but today we're gonna visit a migraines farm in this town, Puerto Escondido, just started out six months ago called Super Verdes. And I'm really excited to show you uh, some of the unique things he's doing here in the small amount of space and what his kind of plans are for the next uh, few months and few years as this boom town of Puerto Escondido starts to grow and grow and grow. So let's get right into the tour. Hi hey. all, my name is Alexei. I'm happy to talk to you. Uh, actually, I'm Ukrainian who came here to the Pacific coastline in Mexico. And uh, how I jump in that stuff? I met one guy last year, he also Ukrainian. He ran in the like, big business in the market in Ukraine, like for the micro geese. Also, he's doing like consulting, coaching and everything. Mm -hmm. And he passionated me, you know, to grow the new things. To, she just dropped me in my house, like the box like that or like that, I don't remember. And hi right, guys, let's jump in and try, you know, it's so nice things, the fresh, you know, nutritious and etc. We tried one, I really like love it. Yeah. Especially, you know, in my childhood, I used to work a lot on my, on the soil. I'm like, I'm not new in agriculture. I used to help in the farm for my parents. Oh, cool. A lot. So I grow a lot of things like all the crops, like, I don't know, tomatoes, potatoes, everything, you know? Yeah. So for me, it's quite a like, natural thing. And I realized that really, uh, one of the things that, another thing that pushed me here in the market, not really like a lot fresh and nice vegetables. Yeah, yeah. And because of the, some like rules in Mexico and all the stuff, like how they do farming. And then also because of the hot weather, they have a lot of like issues with the insects, with everything. Yeah. So we, they use a lot of chemicals mm. to get the crop. Yeah, the yeah. yield action. <laughs> yeah, no, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I have two kids, small kids, so I want them to best. And of course, that was another thing that, why I started to grow. So initially I started to grow for my family. That was the few uh, varieties that I found here on the market. I started to look for the seeds in this small town. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this town, uh, there is no shops with the seeds like untreated one. Yeah. Only with like chemicals, with tiram mostly. Mm. And, uh, but I found few. It was the mustard and another one was peas. I'm okay. still buying from that lady. And that was my few, like few beginning. It was like last autumn, I guess. Yeah. Prior to this, I done the course how to grow. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's not like I'm just like watching you the just, YouTube videos and yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. No, that guy, he like did a nice job. He prepared the course, all the instructions need to be done, how many seeds you need to, yeah. to put and everything. You know, what, what soil need to be done, how you need to be prepared. So I've been like, I'm buying all this stuff like during a few weeks because yeah. nothing exists here in this yeah, town. Yeah, no. <laughs> I have to order everything online, like this one, this stuff, this stuff, even this stuff, you know, the plastic stuff, everything. Yeah, people may not realize that this town, Puerto Escondido, it's about, I think about 60,000 people now. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it's so, for me, it's so unusual. There's no Walmart, there's no Home Depot, there's no McDonald's, there's none of these Western no, brands. So absolutely not. It's really hard to find, uh, you know, supplies on a lot of things. Like even I can imagine the plastic is probably not yeah. the easiest to find. You not know? the easiest. Even yeah. the plastic is really yeah. ridiculous. But so there's is, a different yeah. challenge in growing yeah. in, in, in a place like this. So it's really cool to see you starting up and, and being innovative and using different materials that are maybe not, you know, the most common. Like, for example, the trays are not uh, the Absolutely. typical trays. They're yeah, more yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah. like a... This is, you see, is the simple Chinese stuff. Yeah, and then you The only thing the that I made, I made the holes yeah. for the drainage yeah. Yeah, and also for wetting. Another thing that I'm, that I, I'm using, 
This is the stuff. So you can bottom water. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's smart. So I'm just putting here. Yeah, yeah. I need one, like the water. I'm just water a bit. Yeah. Here, how it's going. And if it's like some excess or whatever, it's easy, you know, to you just, just bend it down and it's gone. Yeah, you know, which is great. Um, one thing I was going to ask is about the, the soil. Um, Cause that's another challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but to, the, in this town. And it's the funny, but the soil I'm buying from Canada. <laughs> really? No way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The best one I found for this place is the pit moss. Yeah, yeah. It's quite sterile, so there yeah. is no like uh, things that then grows quickly, you know, apart from my microgreens. Yeah, yeah. So I don't need it like treated, and uh, and it's like retain the moisture well. well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's uh, also the crazy thing here in Mexico, they have like plenty of coconuts, even like yeah, behind yeah. the window, you know, but, they're not but there is no uh, coco coir. Yeah, I've or, noticed that. Yeah, I bought few packs and I started and immediately got mold. Mm -hmm. So probably... Was it, was it from Mexico, the yeah, car? Yeah, oh, interesting, yeah, yeah. interesting. I, I know, can show you the packs. You yeah, know, yeah, no, that'd be great. Because I, yeah. I know most of it's from Mexico or most of it's from like Sri Lanka, India. Um, and they have like big processing plants there. But in Mexico, it's not really, even though there's tons of coconuts, there's not really an industry here. Yeah, it's, yeah. and it's crazy. I don't know why, you know, it's yeah. just like under your like food. Really yeah, they're working. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. So this is the result. It was also my idea why, well, maybe I'm going to run the factory, you know, to produce. Yeah. But then I first did a lot of other things going on here. Yeah. yeah. So it need to be sorted before. So the so, so how do you get this? Like, do you, do you, Im you import the soil? It's imported, yeah. Oh, okay. I found a uh, few suppliers that I'm buying from. So I'm just bought a bunch, trying, if no issues, I'm, I'm buying like the big bag, big, like yeah. 50 kilos or yeah, 40 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. I just store in a plastic bag just to not like uh, the moisture come in. For sure. Yeah, yeah, just clean it out. Yeah, because I, I, that was one thing I was, I, was, I was super curious when I saw that, um, you know, there's a microgreens farm, you got, you're here, Super Verdes, and I was like, the soil is really what I thought was going to be the biggest challenge in growing here, because like use compost yeah. or, or like, you know, just outside kind of soil, you wouldn't have great results, you know? And apart from that, I'm going to have a lot of fungus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And insects and just like random things popping up Absolutely. that's in that soil Absolutely. naturally, yeah. So the, actually the peat moss works excellent for yeah me. yeah no looks great i'm i'm looking forward to make the mix in the future yeah like like they reduce the cost because they imported like bit more quite expensive yeah i can imagine yeah yeah but the for now i'm just like looking for the best supplier another challenge is the big actually challenge is the seeds yeah that's a good point. Uh, mexican by the law they restrict the import like uh seeds like organic seeds yeah without yeah. treatment so it's not really restricted, but you need to provide like a lot of certificates that it costs a lot, you know, yeah. then import tax and it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I've done it. I even still going now, like after the six months, I'm still looking for another supplier because some supply like run out of, uh, you know, See, some, yeah. some seeds and I have to look for another one. But I found few. They actually deliver nice stuff. Okay. That's great. So I, I'm buying for the three suppliers here. It, they're all in Mexico? They, it's all Mexican companies, yeah. absolutely. Um, but one of them, they actually sell in uh, seeds from United States. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. do import in a big bunch. So then they know then distribute here. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it's easier. For the scale, I'm yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, uh, which one? This one is like in the United States. The it's called col morado in Spanish. Uh, Corabi. Yeah. No, no, no. It's the cabbage. Cabbage, but the like uh, red cabbage. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I grow that same. Uh, the, that same this variety. one kale, yeah. This one also like, like a green from kale. United States. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then and the beets then, look beautiful. You got, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. Different stages. This one is actually a Mexican supply of the seeds. I love it. Yeah, no, they look they look really healthy. Um, and yeah, you don't have any holes on too, which is very impressive. Is there something you do to get ah, the holes yeah, look, off? Look, what, what I do, once I uh, I'm sew it, I put another layer of the uh, pit moss on the top. Yeah. And one day it's pushing, the holes remain there. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So you don't, do you stack them when they're germinating? Absolutely. Oh, okay, yeah, And yeah. one of the things before to sew, I actually put the water in the pit moss, keep it for one hour, so it's like retain the yeah. moisture. Yeah. Then I just sew it and it puts in this bucket. 
uh, okay. in this like, yeah yeah area. and then you just fill them up so this there. is like for for germination yeah it's, it's remained the uh, temperature and moisture so it's more stable yeah yeah do you find there's any mold that grows during germination no. it's all depends on seeds if yeah. the seeds fine and the substrate is fine no issues yeah yeah absolutely yeah. not sometimes i got issues with the peas because when they like sprouting it's uh, gives a lot of energy. Yeah, gets like, heat like, hot. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like overheated. Actually, yeah. when I tried once, like soilless method for them, not works. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, only few types of seeds I can oh, grow. Like, this is, is like radish? hydroponic. Yeah. So ah, okay. Have you done any like comparisons of growing in soil versus the hydroponic? Uh, with the with the daikon, yeah, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Absolutely no. not. Uh, this one actually for the pea here also the soil helps get the excess of the heat so oh, it's not yeah, gone yeah. out you know when it's like sprouting yeah yeah otherwise it's like i just throw it away yeah that's that's a unique challenge here because uh, we were talking before we started filming about yep. the temperature and just humidity look, guys. it's uh <laughs> now we have it's quite like warm 27 28 yeah like in hundred and eight, they're gonna be out. And then, and keep in mind, this is the dry season here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It gets a it's lot. It could jump like for the 85, 90 oh, sometimes. Oh wow, yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah, so you, and you have a fan that kind of yeah. blows the air. Yeah, to, I have the fan on yeah. silicone, like and another one like, like this one. Yeah, yeah. Just to help move that that humid air, because yeah, yeah. It's, wind, uh, wind soap and all that way. Yeah. So actually, but I managed somehow to keep some microclimate. And it's still growing. Well, yeah, they're growing. Yeah, like, you know, I, I, have you tried growing cilantro? Because that's when I'm curious at this temperature. No, I feel no, like it might be a bit cha more like challenging. It's like the challenge for me. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, initially, I thought it may be the seeds. But I believe it's the process. It's a, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely, it's a great climate for a lot of tropical crops, you know. But uh, like sunflower, it, it probably does, it does phenomenal. Like, as, Absolutely, as it looks like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, things like cilantro it's may quite, struggle. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's a big struggle. Yeah. But when I like saw it, I have another like piece of land out of the town, and I saw it just in the land. It's it's, it's growing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it, it's uh, th this climate's great for uh, a lot of crops. It's really just the, the, pretty much here, like we're in like relatively, I, I would call it southern Mexico. There's just a dry season and a wet season, but it's warm all year. All the year. Yeah. yeah. I've been like here for two months. And, and I, I haven't felt cold once. It's kind of, it's crazy how, how warm it is. So um, I guess you can also grow crops that are more adapted, like microgreen crops that are more adapted to that warmer temperature. But like most of the Western, like brassicas, things like that, mustards, generally prefer in the 70s, low 80s. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, there's, yeah. you know, that's just what is most commonly grown as microgreens. You know, maybe one of the things also, you know, every week when I, well, when I'm trying to I try it, uh, I actually shifted the days that they need to grow, you know, yeah. to get the actually the yield. Okay. Because like, we, we, we can say like for the benchmark it could be like seven days or ten days. Yeah. I reduce it one, two days because it, you know, it's warm. Because of the temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's sure. like it's going like rapidly. Yeah, Like yeah. actually the sunflowers, I got like yield in six days. Yeah, I was going to say. Absolutely, like five, six days and it's ready. Yeah. So but, actually all this stuff, most of this stuff going to be delivered tomorrow. Okay, nice. Okay, so do you so do you deliver it in these uh, punnets or do you yeah. so you deliver them like living products to uh, the customers? For the restaurants, of course, I'm cutting oh, and putting in the box in the clam yeah. shells for them because for them, you know, in the kitchen they cannot like yeah. it's not. It's but for the like for the private uh, private like customers, actually, I think maybe sixty percent of my customers they are private customers. They also they care in what they eat. Yeah. So, you know, I'm delivering the life trays. Yeah, it took a while for, for me to explain them how to care about that because it's really hard, you know, some person yeah. just drop it in, I don't know, on the table yeah. and it's like wasted for the like evening time. So I'm explaining where to put, need to be a flow, you know, if you wanted to keep it like two more days, you need to water it, yeah. how to water it. For sure. But uh, I found out also because of humidity and temperature here, this tray size is the best. Mm. Otherwise, when it's gonna be bigger, in the middle, I'm gonna have the airflow issue. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So actually, this size yeah. is good enough. Yeah, that's good. That's that's a, that's, that's something I wouldn't have really thought about because, like, it's so in you know in Canada, the U.S., it's so standardized to have those 10, course, 20 trays because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just easily available. They last. You reuse them. Um, but one, it's difficult, to, I imagine it's very expensive to get them here. And two, for airflow being in a more humid environment, 
Um, that, that's a great solution to that. And I'm yeah. guessing those things are relatively inexpensive to, to buy. Um, the only challenge I see is, you know, as you scale, like if you, let's say you no, were no, 20 times not, the size yeah. and you're drilling holes and all the... No, 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 that's not, yeah. that not going to be applicable yeah. for now, yeah. Then yeah. once it's going to scale up, it's all the process is going to be changed. Yeah, for Definitely. sure. That's smart to have that mindset because I think some people go in thinking that the way they're doing it now is the way they're going to do it when they scale up. And that's when they run into issues of like burnout and just like not having a scalable system. So it's smart that, you know, yeah, it works now, but when you have like... 500 yeah. of these kind of trays, yeah. like a different system will need to be applied. But you know, uh, it's funny thing that uh, in, in Ukraine, nobody used the 10 20 tanks, you know, the, all the people grow. We have like wide, like available, like all across the country, the similar trays, oh, but they actually use for the berries, you know, once yeah. you have the crop, the berries for the like market change, whatever chain, you know, yeah. so it's like millions of them. And it's actually the thing how they grow in, in like in Ukraine for the 15 years. Yeah. And yeah. So wow. it works even for the big and like big like farms. Yeah. They just maybe have more people to do that. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Europe definitely has some different standards in, in microgreens. Like I've done some consulting for farms and some of them use like these like giant, giant, like yeah. 20 inch by 30 inch style or 20 by 20 inch trays. What's and available, then, yeah. Yeah, and then some of them are using these like much smaller uh, like like these ones, which I've seen on, on I haven't done any, any consulting for anyone in Ukraine yet, but uh, what I've seen just there's there's quite a few migrants farms in Ukraine. It's uh, it's really cool to see how many yeah. there there are. Um, because yeah. the like agriculture like generally is the big thing for yeah. like, for Ukraine like for many years. So you know the people do different things. You know in growing the food. You know yeah, like, that's thing. One of the like crops that actually I'm proud of is the fenugreco. Okay, that I was wondering about some, that And actually people buying it and eating it, it's really healthy, it's really healthy, it's nice for digestion, nice yeah. for many things, so like, have li like nutritional value, but it's crazy bitter taste, you know. But here in Mexico, they eat a lot of beans, different kinds, it's called frijol. Yeah. Beef, and I found it's perfectly matching for the certain meals, you know. Interesting. It's super nice yeah, because cool. it's bitter taste, it's like enhanced or maybe like, I don't know, balance the taste of the beans. And it's like excellent, like for me. Yeah, also that's cool. That, sell it. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, it's cool. Even like, some restaurants buying it, so I, and, and it's quite like popular. Yeah. Restaurants and it's like high-end meals, and they buy the fenugreco and add to their meals. Yeah. Super nice. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's smart to figure this out. This is like, the seeds. How it looks like to grow it. It's the it's, fenugreek. Yeah, it's yeah. very popular. It's like Indian medicine. Yeah, In India, yeah. they use a lot of it. It's been when I learned in my course I, when I'm soak it, I use the like aquarium pump, oh, simple one. Yeah. So I put, I give the air, and it's because also the temperature. You know, if you keep in the water like for the 12 hours, just like that, like 28 degrees, 30 degrees. Yeah. The water can go bad, you know. Interesting. Yeah. You know what I mean, and it's like it's gonna be spoiled. So we'll keep it fresh. Yeah. The seeds. I put the air inside. So it's keep fresh. So is I gonna do it today with the with the peas? With the peas. Yeah. No, that makes sense because um, I know like you can't drink the tap water here, right? So there's yeah, there's yeah, natural yeah. bacteria in there, which aren't necessarily like bad once you adapt to them. But for like you don't want that bacteria to be breeding. So if you oxygenate the water, that should hopefully reduce the Absolutely. amount of that bacteria. Uh, and after that, no like moldy shoe. Yeah. Nothing like that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so I don't see any mold at all. All of them like that, you know, treated like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Sometimes I just, sometimes it, I'm reduced, but usually it's overnight. So I just put it in like in evening time and morning time and just ready to soak. Yeah, yeah. So you've been growing now for just like maybe nine months roughly, because you said even last less, summer. Even less, even yeah. less. Like I'm, I'm, I've done the course maybe July last year. Then I'm like, I've been busy with buying all this equipment yeah. and stuff. Then I start to try, you know, and then actually I um, started like to make it like systematically maybe the September, so, kind of six months. Oh wow, I guess. okay, cool. So doing this for about six months now, yeah. um, like continuously and like what, what, what would your plans be going forward? To, uh, to now actually I, I want, I, I have to put a lot of uh, effort to build the market. Mm. Yeah, there are some like microgreens, but there is no actually in the market. Yeah, yeah. They want supply from the capital of the state, from Oaxaca. I know the shop who is like, which is selling it. Yeah. Maybe few like uh, people buying there, but it's just a, it's small. It's like zero zero percent. Yeah, right? yeah. I get like some private customers. I start to like work with the restaurants, 
Yeah, so the thing now, like I'm going to put more effort for the marketing, for the building market. Yeah. Then once I'm going to see that this is not enough, you see even the one shelf is empty now. Yeah. So it depends on the week. Sometimes it's like fully booked. Yeah. So, but I have actually the space now, even if I got like, then I can move, for example, for the, now I have one harvest, I can move two harvest per week. So I have rotation, you know? True, yeah. Once I'm going to see that I need to scale up, immediately I'm going to like rent the, another place, I'm going to have AC. Yeah, yeah. No. To keep it like more, and then I'm going to scale up, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I hope to make it during this spring. Then it's going to be a bit challenging because the May and June is the hottest month here. It's crazy. Yeah. So I will see how it's going on. Actually, my idea, the prime, the, the first idea was to run the full circuit through the, through the year yeah. to see how it goes with the climate, you know, sure. because, because it's That's really smart. even sometimes three degrees. It's a big difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially when you get above 80, like going from 80 to 83 or 80 yeah. to 85, exactly. you know, it can make exactly. a really big difference. So, you know, to be prepared, then I know what, to, what I need to do, you know, yeah, yeah. to like effectively. Otherwise, you know, I don't want to waste my time. Actually, it's the side thing that I do because apart from that, it's not my income. It's like more hobby. It's, yeah, hobby for now. The, yeah. What pushed me is the passion to grow the things. I love it. And others push me is like health of my family yeah. and the community that I'm living. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, so I, I think it's, it's, it wasn't actually not about money, you know? Yeah, but it's cool to see you be like a frontier in like a new area and, and bring microgreens because like, you know, someone's got it, got it started. And yeah, there is another grower from Oaxaca City, which is like, yeah. you know, a three hour drive. So it's not really grown here, it's shipped here. So to have something grown here and then yeah, have people start understanding the health benefits of microgreens and um, yeah, I'm excited to see. Like, I'm definitely going to be back in this town because I love it here. So I'm excited to see uh, how, how much migraines will explode in popularity over the next few years and more and more people know about yeah. them in the area. Yeah, we'll throw our best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So if people want to follow you on social media or see what, you, what you're up to, where can they find you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have Instagram. It's called Super Verdes. It's quite easy to find. Yeah, but they actually the the Instagram or the social media it's not the selling channel. Yeah, it's just like presents, you know. So once you start to talk to someone, you can okay, you can find more, you know. Yeah, yeah. Other sure. than you know, to make the ten minutes speech that nobody cares about. So, <laughs> so this is the pictures because the visuals they work the best. You yeah, know? for sure. Yeah, I think I think the the best way to sell microgreens is to get people to just try them. So just giving yeah, out you exactly. know, giving out samples and for the chiefs to to help them where to put in the meals. Yeah, yeah. Even, even you know, even the people, the private the customers who, who want to eat like healthier, they sometimes don't know where to put. Okay, sell it, you know, but apart from sell it, you know, you could put many things like, oh, we yeah. do it like omelets, whatever, you know, like, yeah. like tacos here is a big thing. Yeah. You could put in any taco, oh, yeah, you know, it's sure. like anything. Yeah, yeah. So the receipts, all the things that I need to work on now. And then of course, like, and other things like equipment, new space, yeah. and other things. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and like um, for anyone interested, I, I just released a recipe book on using microgreens. Wow. Um, so it's totally free. You can find it on our website. Super. And um, yeah, and then there's ways, different, different unique ways that you can use them. Um, for example, we have like a, um, a pea shoot pesto. Ah, which is something an interesting way to use it and then uh, like a green smoothie for broccoli and uh, you know, the more mild flavor greens um, and then a few other ones but yeah super. yeah so feel free to check that out but uh, thanks so much for having me and uh, yeah it was great thank to, you uh, great to see see this blossoming in in Porto because I think yeah. this town is amazing it's it's already exploding and I know my greens will become more and more popular here for sure over the next few years yeah we're gonna do that yeah awesome. <laughs> thank you so much